Welcome everyone to our third in the series of 10 free talks to get your craft business ready for the digital and physical opportunities in 2021 and beyond. These talks have been created by the Crafts Council and funded by Crafting Europe. Please note that we have translation options in Ukrainian and please do put your questions in our Q&A function. My colleague Emily will be joining us later to facilitate these questions. We will be recording this webinar and we'll be sharing this with everyone that's booked this webinar today. Before I welcome our speakers, Franny Glass, Digital Marketing Officer for the Crafts Council, and Glass Artist Anahita Hasami from Cut Glass Studio Limited, I would like to set some a context of how Instagram can support your business. Firstly, the rationale, why use Instagram? And I do want you to seriously think about this because all of the talk here today, Franny will be sharing with you insights of how to make Instagram work for your business, but it does require time and planning. In the research that you've already done on brand values, refer to our first talk for those of you who missed it, and how to build customer profiles, refer to our second talk, you will have hopefully a better understanding of what you do, why you do it, and who you're trying to communicate to. If your audience are not finding you or communicating with you through Instagram, then this might not be the option for you. So always think about the why. Research. Do factor in your research in your day-to-day -day planning and running of your craft business. For Instagram, we recommend looking into your competitors or your role model, how they structure Instagram into their business, how they post, how they run their stories, what is the content, how they design it. Think about that research and what information you can gather to apply to your own craft business. Marketing. Instagram is just one method to market a craft business. Do your posts or your stories inspire others to connect? Do they excite you even? So really think about that content that you are preparing for your Instagram activities and really think about how you can inspire people to connect. Structure. My colleague Franny will be talking a lot about how to structure an account, but I want you to think about structuring Instagram in the, in the reference to your whole craft business. It is not just managing an account, it is planning, planning ahead, building up the content, the images, the film, finding a budget for this. Do you need a budget for this? Do you need to skill up or recruit somebody else? What can you do that you can build into your day-to-day -day running of your business and these longer-term campaigns? Planning. What are the planning tools that you have in place for running a craft business? In the case of Instagram, if you don't know where to start, we recommend putting pen to paper and sketch out, say, 12 squares, just as you see in an Instagram feed, and plan out ideas of what you plan to post. This is just a starting point. You can do it in a Pinterest board or wherever you want but start with the planning. It's always good to plan ahead. Connections, the who. It is really important to understand who you're talking to. I refer again to our how to build customer profiles. I think it's really important to understand your customers, what they're interested in, and being really clear and consistent in the messages you're putting out there with, in relation to your craft business. This will help support the purpose behind what you do and stop you from planning in a vacuum. Finally, the long game, the future. 
We are all on a journey. Some of us might be at different points, but it's still a journey. It's always worth having a plan of where you want to get to, both short and longer term. Set some goals that you can work towards, such as obtaining 100 more followers by the end of the year, or generating three new clients by August, or longer term, to have Instagram as your main method for promoting and selling your work. Thank you. I will now hand over to my colleague, Franny Glass. And later on, we will be hearing from Anahita um, from the Cut Glass Studio Limited, who will be sharing her insight into how she uses Instagram. So Franny, over to you. Great, thank you, Caroline. I will just get my screen up. Can everyone see that? Okay. So thank you for that lovely introduction, Caroline, and welcome everybody. Um, I just actually want to caveat this talk by telling you that there is a lot we're going to go through today, but please don't feel too overwhelmed. Everything is a journey and you can figure out what is best for you as we go through this. There are a lot of options um, and you can just see whatever suits your business. So I'll just take you through what we're going to talk about. So first of all, we're going to talk about the fundamentals, which is the goals that you'll set against your Instagram strategy, your audience and the competitors, then how to get your page in order. So basically just exploring all of the different buttons and all of the different things that are, are available to you on your profile. Then we'll go on to content, which will be the types of posts that you can do, testing and insights, and then how you can guide your cho choices based on those insights and then maximizing impact. So that's paid and contra advertising. Contra is a word that basically means uh, an in-kind partnership with someone. So no money changes hands. And actually it's worth saying at this point that we will share a glossary of terms. So please don't worry too much if you don't understand what anything is. Um, and then the other thing on maximizing impact is looking at engagement on and off your page. And then we'll move on to a chat with Anahita and then a Q&A, so over to you. So. Oh, I've just moved something. Oh, it's not letting me. There we go. The fundamentals. So defining your goals, audience and competitors is the first thing that you want to do is, as Caroline said, when you've got your business objectives really fresh in your mind, make sure that your Instagram goals align with those objectives. So that might be something like increasing your brand awareness, driving traffic to your website if you've had a new product launch or anything like that, increasing sales via Instagram or increasing visits to any exhibitions or shows or workshops that you might be hosting. The next thing is to know your target audience and market. So that's the key demographics of your audience. So that might be something like age, location, interests. And then you can build profiles based on these demographics. So it might be something like Jane, 23, really into woodwork. Um, this will then really help with targeted ads later down the line. So make sure that you do this quite rigorously and try to use real data. Don't, do, don't make assumptions. Try and look at real-time data. So you'll keep coming back to those Instagram goals uh, throughout this kind of content strategy. So you will want to make sure that your content dire directly speaks to this target market and also is in line with those goals. Um, at this point, you also kind of want to map your role models and competitors. So see what types of content is performing best on other businesses that are quite like yours on their pages. Um, and seeing what kind of content people like, the hashtags, the visual language, as well as the successes on their profile. So do they have a better follower um, engagement and are they increasing their followers? Okay, so get your page in order. This is a really important thing to do before you start sharing anything. So whether you've already got a profile or not, really get back to basics and explore every aspect of your profile. Um, you want to definitely be using a business account. You can easily switch that in settings and I'll share that in the notes after this talk. But by using a business account, this means that you can look at insights, you can connect your account with your Facebook page, you can run paid advertisements and you can also make a shop. And it also makes it much easier for followers to contact you. Also make sure that you're using a profile photo and a username that reflects your business. Again, that's just if people were to stumble across you, you want it to be really obvious who and what you are. 
fill in your bio and regularly update it with news. So that might be something like a new exhibition or workshop um, and also regularly update your website. So if you're not using something like Linktree, which I'll come on to in a second, that website is the only link that you have on your profile. So you really want to make sure it's going to a key part of your website. So link in bio, we've got something called Sked Social, which I'll also come back to. But if you choose to use some kind of software like Linktree or Sked Social or another paid software, I'll also include this in the notes, then you can use one URL uh, to link to all of these separate destination URLs. So that might, could be really useful if you're launching a new product or you've got multiple things to say at the same time. Um, it's actually a really good, Linktree is free. So that's a great option if you're looking for low cost. So the other things are to get, yeah, as I said, get to know your profile. Instagram, do regularly update stuff. So it's worth regularly updating the app and also just kind of keeping abreast of things as you're doing the strategy. Uh, consider a visual identity. So that might be like color palette, fonts, image style, anything to create this idea of consistency. And at this beginning stage, you also want to think about content themes to help you guide those strategy goals. So you might have four pillars like sharing process stories, new product releases, mental health and making things that will really guide you as you as you work towards those goals. Um, it's a very good idea to map a content schedule that aligns with those business objectives. So we use something called Trello. You could use Excel. Um, but again, if, if, if you're someone who likes to post a bit more organically, then maybe this, this kind of rigorous planning isn't something that works for you. So it's just whatever works for you. So scheduling software, this is something that we use. This is called Sched Social. This is what it would look like in the back. Um, scheduling software like Sked Social, Planoly, Preview, Hootsuite and Sprout Social. Again, this is all coming in the notes. Uh, will allow you to map content and they, you, there are free options, but they generally cost between five and 30 quid per month, um, depending on what kind of options you want to get out of it. But scheduling software means that you can create literally the post. So you see you have the caption, the comment, the U, a URL that would link in like this. It would come up here, one of these images, you would click it and it would come through to whatever your URL you put in here. Um, and they're just, it is a very, very good option for mapping content ahead of time. So that's what a calendar would look like. And it also helps you to look at the grid and see what kind of visuals work well together. So moving on to content. So types of posts, you, you, as a young business, you might not have all of the features that bigger businesses do get. So please don't worry too much if there are things that you hear other people have um, that you can't seem to see on your profile. It's, it's also worth just doing some research and seeing what kind of things unlock at what stage. But um, just looking at the grid, this is the obviously the most basic uh, posting option that Instagram offers. This really is the face of your business. So you want all of those juicy images and everything to really speak to your brand message and be consistent with who you are. So like we said, you can use color palettes and copy to create that kind of consistency. You can up your photography game and use really, I mean, it kind of goes without saying you have to have really high quality images. And I think my colleague Tambi is actually gonna share a link to a resource that we've done about photography that's really helpful. We recommend using carousels for things like product launches or like before and afters or sneak peeks of work because uh, carousels really get a lot of engagement and the Instagram algorithm, which unfortunately changes a lot as well, does prioritize high engagement with, um, with content rather than chronology, which is what it used to be. So do use carousels. We know that they get a lot of views. And another thing that gets a lot of views is video. Really, really, really good idea to experiment with, with video on Instagram. So on the grid, you can do videos that are between three seconds to a minute in length. When it comes to copy, you want to add, if you can, make your calls to action a bit more interesting. So it might be something like subscribe to your newsletter to get this kind of information. And it might be a, an interesting fact about your business or um, uh, pointing to an exhibition. 
and you you really want to move people successfully down the fit the sales funnel so you could say subscribe to my newsletter through the link in my bio um, and if you are going to write hefty captions please use line um sorry line breaks to break it up a bit we also recommend using hashtags. It's kind of like the unsung hero of the small business Instagram world. Hashtags are really good for sending people to your business because um, often people might type in handmade or anything like that to try and get to your, um, that might direct them to your profile. So we'll also share a good kind of list of hashtags that we know are big in the craft world in the notes. And also try and post things exclusive to Instagram. There will be lots of people that follow all of your profiles. So try and make Instagram something a bit different because it is so visual. Okay, so moving on to stories. Stories appear at the top of followers feeds. I'm sure that you've all seen this when you log in, you can see people's stories at the top. So they really do stand out and they don't clutter feeds in the same way that grids do. You can be really quite experimental with your stories content and also bring to life those posts that you're putting on the grid. So if you post a new product, maybe you would post the process story behind it or a bit more of a how-to, or uh, maybe you could talk to a technician that you've worked with to create that product. So like I said, there is, when you get to 10K followers, you can include swipe up links in those stories. Um, so you might link up to the new product or highlight a press feature. But even if you don't have 10K followers, you can still use great features like countdown stickers or questions or polls and really quite um, use things that will engage with your audience. Something we really recommend is announcing new posts on your grid in your stories because it can really bring things to life and drive traffic back to your profile because ultimately that's what you want people to do. Um, you can get some mileage as well out of those stories as by creating highlights. And I think I hope you can see my cursor. I'm just hovering here. That's what highlights look like on your profile. So it's you can create these custom little pictures that, that show you what they are. And then you can title them based on like this person's done workshops, press projects. And it's a really great way to keep people looking at your story content. OK, so now we're going to move on to more kind of video possibilities throughout Instagram. And like I said, if this is too much, please don't worry. It's not completely necessary to do any of these things. If you're stretched and you're one person, then don't worry too much. But it is a really good way to engage with your audience if you want to take it to the next level. So for any video content, make sure you've got good lighting, noise reduction and that you're prepared as possible. Um, Instagram Live is a really good way to connect with directly with your audience and it is completely live so obviously you're kind of giving yourself up to whatever circumstances you're in but it's a really nice way to engage with someone be it behind the scenes in an event or maybe it's a QA. and a um, and Instagram IGTV Instagram TV is also also video, but more kind of, um, you can, it's more bespoke, you can work on it, you can tailor it, you can do, you can film it ahead of, ahead of time and then upload it. So this, you have a bit more control with IGTV. So those videos can be up to an hour in length and they can be shared on the grid and they also come up on the IGTV channel. Um, like I said, this could be a video with stills and music, or it could be a tour through your workspace, an interview with a client or a video of you making. They get really, really good engagement. We've seen that on our Instagram page. Reels, they are kind of Instagram's answer to TikTok. So they are 15 to 30 second multi-cut videos, which sounds like baffling, but we will also include this in the glossary. Um, and they are just really short form, snappy, content videos that again if you don't have the time don't do it but they are good so shop feature this is something that is definitely worth pursuing because according to latest research there are 130 million instagram users tapping on shopping posts every month so that's a minefield of people that you want to be accessing so instagram shoppable posts make it easier for people to shop uh, items that are tagged products in your post so there is an option when you upload something to the grid to tag it as a product you can also do this on instagram stories and igtv 
and you'll see there's a little view shop button there underneath the website on the profile page which pops up and then it shows you the product list so this person's only got nine products when you have a few more products the grid is a bit bigger but it's really easy you can check out through instagram and it's definitely worth doing if you have shoppable products auto highlighting when you're on if you're tagging a product on your stories auto highlighting will save that to a highlight like we were talking about earlier this little circle that appears underneath your um, bio so that will always come up as a, a product a shoppable highlight so testing um, we know that marketing and analytics are a daunting task for small businesses. I mean, we find it daunting ourselves at the Crafts Council and we have a team of people doing it. So please don't stress too much about it. But the insights on your page can really teach you a lot about what's working and what you what um, you want to take forward in your content, content strategy and what might be worth axing. So if you just click on the little insights page, and it might even be worth getting your phone up right now if you want to have a look. If you have a business profile, click on the insights button and it will take you to this uh, interface where you can look at all this was the last 30 days this is actually the crafts council insights that you're getting a look into so over the last 30 days where you can see the accounts you reached the interactions that people people had with your content um your audience which i'll show you in a second and your all of your all of the content you shared so if you click into audience you get these demographic breakdowns which is really interesting again not don't worry too much if it's too much for you to handle at this point but when you want to take it to the next level it's good to delve into this so you can look at the age range the gender this is an unusual split for us so it was interesting for us to look at what content spoke more to our female audience um, and the most active times and when you look at the most active times that will help you inform when to post your stuff on the grid and then if i was to click into the content you can look at your, it will basically, you can select a metric to see exactly what kind of stuff um, you want to look at on each individual post that you shared. So for example, we shared this image of Barbara Hepworth and I filtered it by post interaction. So that would be people that are commenting on it, like any kind of engagement with it. Um, and we can see that over 3000 people did that. So it's, it's, from this you can see what's working and what's not so like i said um uh see what's working and what's not it's really useful to set times to look at these instagram insights methodically because otherwise it just slips away and the thing with instagram is that you can look at you can only look at a week-long view or a month-long view um that slightly changes if you want to pay for software we'll get to that but um, it's a really good idea to, to have a set time to do it. Again, determine what matters using your outlined goals at the beginning. So you might want to look at website traffic from posts and just make sure that really aligns with your business goals. Um, observe and record what kind of content gets the most engagement and then optimal timing and then change your strategy based on that. And like I said, pay, post at peak times and you'll make sure that people are engaging with your content a bit better. Um, experiment with hashtags so use this use these insights to help you change and work on different things and experiment with angles and all of these different things and then you'll see what's you can compare it to what works and what doesn't try and keep reports um, it's really useful to be able to look at the progression of your business but again if you're not there don't stress too much so maximizing impact Paid advertising and collaboration. So it is a very challenging time for small businesses to reach new audiences organically. There is a lot out there that the market and Instagram particularly is really saturated. So a bit of so paid social advertising can really go a long way. Um, when it comes to making those adverts, it really they allow you to target really specific audiences. So if you go back to those pen profiles that you made at the beginning, um, you can target based on location, age, demographic, and again, use your insights to help you with this. It's a really good idea to collaborate with small businesses and Instagrammers, um, you, like this person here has done. Um, they did a project working with a new tribe and used patterns and prints. And what that's doing is kind of a cross-pollination of followers 
and exposing you to their audience, them to your audience. So it's it's a really nice way to build your network and reach new people. Um, if you're reposting, make sure you use a proper credit. You don't want to um, someone else to post something about your stuff and then not do the same. So scratch their back and they'll scratch yours. And signpost, if anything, you're posting as a paid advertisement. We're not going to go too much into that kind of sponsored content today, but just make sure that anything that you're doing that has money behind it from someone else is signposted. Again, we'll put that in the, the notes. So engagement on the page is one of the most important things that you can do as a small business trying to reach new people on Instagram. So engaging with your followers in the comment section on your grid, basically this is like customer service. Um, you want to, if someone replies to your picture, whether it's nice or not, you want to engage with them um, and just bring some personality to your brand. You can encourage follower engagement with questions and tag related accounts. So you might say in your caption something like, what do you think of this new bag? Or what do you, um, what are your opinions on this new material or sustainability or anything that kind of just gets the conversation flowing? It's a really good idea to engage with your local community. Um, if that's something that's interesting to you, if you're working in, in an area with local markets or recognizable landmarks, have a look at the hashtags that people are using in the area and you can use location tagging. So that's called geotagging in Instagram. Um, and it basically just, it shows that you're in that place at that time. And lots of people click on those, those tags when they're in a new place and discovering new things. So it could be really useful for you to show up. Give shout outs to brands you like. It's really nice if you're, or especially if you're stuck for a bit of content and you don't know what to put on the grid, you can put something that you like up there and it's just a really nice way to build that kind of relationship with other businesses on Instagram. And incentivize one of your goals with a giveaway. This is a really tried and tested way to, to boost followers and to boost engagement with your work. So you might say something like, win a free product um, or a free product it can be won by followers who tag in three friends um, and and you could say uh, ask them to follow you as well don't tolerate abuse or trolling feel free to block anyone who is giving you grief it's, it's really not okay and we're actually going to share in the chat now my colleague Tanvi is going to share a link to a talk that we did with someone called Dr Karen Patel about visibility and invisibility on social media and it delves into the kind of uncomfortability of being on social media and being visible and different situations that um, that you might you might find yourself in and how you can combat them um, so be sensitive to any any concerns raised in the comments you can, if something, if you feel like something is best dealt with in direct message, feel free to do that. Um, but, but please, like I said, block away if someone's being horrible. So engagement off the page. Again, this is really crucially important. This is how you get your name out there onto Instagram. So look at other people's content and follow and like and comment and do everything you can to get your name out there. Um, saving content is another thing that is a, a real algorithm boost so if people save your content then your stuff will show up more and more so you can again with that giveaway you can encourage people to save your content um, for a giveaway instruction or you know just ask people ask friends and family to do it however many people you can get them saving uh, create a branded hashtag for your products and ask your customers to post using it. So this is a really useful way to keep track of who is using your products. You can easily share that, um, sorry, search that hashtag in the search bar on Instagram, but do check that it's not in use before doing it. We have fallen into this trap before and it's really difficult to extrapolate your stuff from whatever other people are using. So make sure it's a unique hashtag. Feature your Instagram account on your website, on a newsletter and all other digital channels. And you just you basically you just want to get as much kind of cross pollination traffic from everywhere that you can. So use all of those resources that are available to you quite easily. And finally, maintenance. So like I said, direct messaging can be really useful for customer service. You can use it to thank people or to deal with any issues. 
um, go through Instagram and save any content that you love and you don't, this doesn't mean that you have to share it, but it could be just inspiration or maybe you do share it on the feed or maybe it's um, friends exhibitions or you just kind of see it as the, as a kind of small business, as like I said, scratch your back situation. Post regular updates like opening hours and sneak peeks. Opening hours is a really good example of, of things that are changing in your business um, that people might want to know later down the line. Um, post consistently. So it's said in, in across Instagram, kind of in the Instagram circles, that posting consistently is the way to keep people coming back to your page. Consistently is the operative word here because that might be once every day or it might be once every three days. Just try and try and create a kind of map that works for you. Tagging. So it's really important to tag, like I said, to use the at symbol followed by the username to mention another account and tag people in the photo if there is someone else there. You can also tag yourself um, and that means that you'll come up in the tagged photo section on your profile. Um, and you also want to encourage people to tag you in pictures as well. Dedicate social time every day and keep up with that marketing plan. So by dedicating social time every day, you could be doing not necessarily the same thing every day. Maybe one day you look at insights, maybe the next day you do a bit of following and liking of other people's stuff, um, but just kind of map it into your routine so it becomes like um, second nature. And when it comes to your grid, you can archive anything that you don't want on your page. Don't delete it because this is the history of your business. Um, just archive it. No one will ever see it, but it's useful to you to useful for you to look back and be able to see how much you've changed, how much you've grown, what used to work, what now doesn't, you know, all of that kind of stuff. It's great to have it there. And finally, have fun. This is a social platform and it's supposed to be fun and interactive and enjoyable and we know that sometimes it can be stressful we have all been there but try as hard as you can to not let yourself get overwhelmed because um ultimately it is it is it can be a very good laugh and now we're going to chat to anahita if you're there anahita do you mind removing oh there she is hello hello Hi. Nice to meet you. Yes, you too. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me here. A pleasure. Um, so we've got a couple of questions for you and then we'll go to the floor and people can ask you and ask whatever they like. But first of all, I just wondered if you could tell me a bit more about your customer service and engagement on Instagram and how it's been made easier for you. Well, I mean, I really uh, opened an Instagram because my friends kept encouraging me to. Um, social media was not something that I was uh, into for my private life and I'd never really considered it for my business so it was something that I was encouraged to do and to be honest like um, I've probably been using it for over five years now and it has it's a, it's it's open it's widened my friendship group and it's widened um, my knowledge of um, the world that even, that even I'm in, you know, that I thought I knew everyone or the people that mattered or, you know, what, whatever you think you know. Um, and then you realise there's this huge world out there and it gives me the ability to um, connect with makers all over the world, which is just insane. And mm -hmm. that that's, you know, it, I, I treat it more as a fun thing um, alongside it being a bonus for, for promoting the business. And on that, do you find that people find you through Instagram? Do you find customers have found you through like hashtags or any of the things that we've spoken about? Yeah, loads. Um, it's crazy. Like it's weird in um, having gone from starting the business and being so very serious and very formal and then, you know, literally taking on commissions via Instagram Messenger. You know, and just thinking, well, um, I'd really prefer if you sent me an email and we can talk that way. Um, but yeah, it's it's nuts to even think that someone can see um, your portfolio who's, you know, in Australia or in, in Japan or in China or somewhere that's not where you're at. And and even in today's world, contact you and say, well, actually, you know, I have, I have a space and I really like your work. And so can you help me? And then you know, we have the ability to even ship it 
to mm-hmm. them and it's down to them to then just fit it, I suppose, or hang it wherever they may. So, Do you find that hashtags have been really useful for that or is there a particular kind of element of Instagram that is is best? I really don't know. Um, I've, I don't spend a lot of time looking at the analytics. Um, mm-hmm. The main thing that I found interesting was just that I have uh, far more women on my platform than I do men. Um, but I guess that makes sense because, you know, I'm a craftswoman and um, I guess crafts in general is more appealing to a female market. But I mean, no, it's, it's, it's not something I know much about because, like I say, I use the platform really just to have fun and to promote, you know, the fun that we have here every day. I suppose. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it's that's the most crucial aspect, just to be true to yourself and and be honest about who you are and who your brand is. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important that if you if you want to engage properly and you want to get a an honest response from the, the viewer or whoever's using you know your account um, to to send you a message or leave a comment, that you are the person that directly responds to them and that. It's not a generic response that you give every time, that it's a personalised, you've taken the time to read it. There's been so many large accounts that I've interacted with that I've, you know, I really like their work. And you leave a comment and you get, never get anything in response. And it's a little bit, oh, you know, like, and so to get a response, I, I, I understand the value in that. Yes. Just being the other person admiring someone else who's ignoring me for admiring them so you know I understand the value and I and I try to be as open to everyone like a lot of questions all the time I get a lot of direct messages um so yeah I mean I try to accommodate everyone as much as I can let's take up a lot of my time though yes I mean I think that's just something that you have to be aware of isn't it that this really is a part of your marketing strategy that even though it can be fun you do have to factor in time into your business plan I mean, if you know, I'm running a business. So at the end of the day, as much as Instagram's my little fun go to every time I want to procrastinate, um, you know, there is an in the analytics, it does show you how much time you spend on the yes. platform. Yeah. And that sometimes is quite shocking. I'm like, how yeah. did I even get any work done today? Yeah, I know. I mean, we've all been victim of doom scrolling. Yeah. But um, I mean, I use hashtags a lot. They do work. So, you know. Good. And I noticed that now you people can follow hashtags and things. So um, when you're following someone or looking at their account and engaging with other people on uh, in the same uh, sector as you or working with the same substrates, um, you can see what hashtags they're following. And, you know, Instagram started highlighting things that you share with people, which is quite cool because then you, you kind of get to see what other people's habits are on on the platform. Um, but you know, yeah, hashtagging works a treat. I mean, mm. I don't really do a lot of videos. I've had quite a few people come in here and make some great videos of me, um, which is fantastic. But I'm not very techy, so I'm a, you know, yeah. I literally am great at cutting glass and leading it, and that's about as far as it goes with me. Everyone else does a lot. Of people stuff will relate. Me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the f- I'm terrible at filming, and I work in digital marketing. So there, there you go. go. Um, what number one piece of advice would you give a maker who is just starting out on a heater? I think it is. Um, it's about being consistent and about you know the content being valuable to to people as well. You know, as well as to yourself that you're not posting things that are too personal that someone maybe can't relate to or understand what you're talking about or what you're getting at um and and it just being yeah just all relatable um and and visually satisfying i think obviously if you're running a visual based business um people want to see they want to see the the what's going on in the background so using the platform with the stories is like a really uh, people love seeing stories people love me like showing the process of making a window and then obviously the lovely last finished picture of it is it, of it basking in the sunshine is always lovely but I think people enjoy seeing the stories a lot more because it's the process of me you know um, starting from design to actual fruition you know going through the whole process. Um, it's very but, cathartic. Yeah I mean I think the main thing is is just to be um, 
just to be honest with what you're putting out there and just, you know, it just be a true expression of what you want to put out there and not have somebody else, not hire somebody else to do it for you. You know, it has to be true. So if you're making, you know, if you're a ceramicist, then I think it's important that if someone was to, you know, ask a technical question, you, you're there to give them the right answer and it's not just you know fobbing off or something because I, I I always try to I get so many technical questions like what kind of um flux do I use um what kind of lead where do I buy my lead from what manufacturer you know somebody else running the account would probably then just have to ask me the question anyway so yeah. you know it makes more sense that it's you and I think that that's that's the reason why my account has, has grown from being so very tiny to what it is is because I, I interact with people so I think it is about this level of honesty and just being you absolutely it works I imagine also by doing that by engaging with people and hearing what they have to ask it then can inform what you post about you know what people want to see to a degree yeah yeah for sure and it's but it's always um it's always the things that I think are going to go crazy don't and then the things that I'm not that keen on, I'm like, well, I'm going to post it anyway. And it just goes mad. And you're like, OK, well, you know, I you think that's really a really know. important point. It's audiences are so unpredictable. You never yeah. know what people are going to like. So you I, never know. And, and you, yeah, your taste isn't, you know, it's it's not necessarily relevant. If you're exactly. posting online, it's, everyone's going to have their go at uh, you know it's all about perception and what people are seeing isn't it and, so and their opinion it's all good it's uh, yeah subjectiveness it's all yeah. fine worth bearing that in mind if anyone doesn't like anything it's just subjective well yeah I mean I think that's the main point is to never really be negative on them. there's never really a need for that if there's something you don't like just don't say anything at all <laughs> I wish people would live by that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, so shall we move to the Q&A? Yeah, perfect. Have we got, I think Emily's going to join us. She, she is. So thank you so much, Franny and Anahita. Um, that was really insightful. So much information and content there. And I know that <laughs> we've got a lot of questions in the Q&A um, and just sort of being bearing in time. I think we can spend 10 minutes on questions. So I'm going to hand over to Emily now. Hi everyone, um, lovely to see so many of you on the call. We have just short of 300 participants, so thank you for all your questions. If we don't have time to cover them all, I will make a point of copy pasting them into some kind of FAQ doc and giving you some guidance post event. So sorry if we don't cover all, all your questions today. Um, so a lot of you have raised concerns around lower engagement um, and noticing that from 2020 onwards there's been a bit of a dip in how your content's prioritised in the feed and also in stories. Um, I guess just a bit of housekeeping, it's really important to strategize focusing on engagement rather than reach and impressions. Those big numbers can look really nice in your reporting dashboards and when you're you know, sharing insights with um, fellow makers and any kind of collectives you're part of, but the conversion can be quite low. And so really focusing your time and attention, like Fran said, on comments, likes, shares, saves, that will tell the Instagram robot to push your content higher because it's teaching Instagram that your feed is useful and um, is offering value to your followers. And so you're, that will then have a knock on effect and your content will be seen more often. So hopefully that puts some minds at ease. <laughs> you're not being forgotten. It's just maybe that you've got loads of views but not many comments. Um, so maybe some of those competition incentives and so on that Fran recommended would help. Um, and then our next uh, big focus is, um, do any scheduling apps allow you to test and preview stories before scheduling? Fran, do you want to answer that one? Um, not to my knowledge. I think stories is something that is very much out there and there is no testing. Something that we do is uh, we have a test account and that can be really helpful to see if you don't want to invest in scheduling software. You can test out stories and see how they look and see what works. But yeah, I don't think that you can test through scheduling software. Mm. Um, just a reminder, we use things like Hootsuite, Scared Buffer to, to schedule stories in advance. It's just that testing section that you might need a, some dummy content to play with. And to the person that asked around background colour changes on your stories, that's just a quick trick. You just tap and hold. So when you're posting a story, push your finger on the um, screen for a little bit longer and then you can do a colour selection and drop more images on top so you get that more collage effect. 
Um, somebody else has asked, do you think it's off-putting to point people to the link in bio? Is this too many steps? I would argue, and I'm sure you'll agree, Fran, no, that's a really good, uh, that's best practice, really. We talk about the three-step rule in digital comms, making sure that users don't have to jump through more than three hoops to get to that point of conversion or the checkout. So if it's post to link in bio, uh, well, post to bio and then link in bio, that's free. And as long as you're taking them to a really um, relevant web page and not making your users jump through more hoops when they get onto your website to find that product or um, piece of editorial then you're sound um, and then there are a few other questions around reposting and where to find more info I would just direct you to the Instagram how-to guides they have loads of FAQs the best place to find all of these instructional step-by-steps is either within the app zone guidance or even YouTube there's lots of how-to instructional videos out there which are a bit easier to follow in the notes that I'll share, I've included a few useful links of how-to guides and things using things like link in bio. So hopefully that will all be quite useful. Perfect. Um, okay, and then we had three people ask, what is a carousel? Do you want to take that one? Sure. So a carousel, it's, oh, I wish I had an example, but if take, for example, Anna Heater's work here, she's actually done a car carousel here. That little arrow takes you through to, however many more pictures she's got there so you can have up to five images and you just scroll through yeah and I think you can include video now as well so carousel is quite, quite a useful way of telling a story or kind of bringing a product to life so rather than having that one still life shot if you wanted to maybe have a testimonial or some behind the scenes content of how that product came to be or um, maybe a more stylized kind of flat lay tabletop um, view of the same item it's, it just allows you to do your content to go a little bit further without spamming people's feeds because it all sits neatly in one row. Okay. Did I get that wrong? Did you say it was eight, Anahita? Eight you, images. You can put up 10 photos. 10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Not> update. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and and you can put up 100 stories in any saved, uh, what is it, the feature thing that you save? Highlight. Highlights. Highlights, yeah. the highlights. Yeah, you can only save 100 in those. I learned because I made this crazy massive mosaic that just had a billion pictures. And when I tried to save them all, it only lets you save a hundred in Good one go. I right. mean, that's mammoth anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so just conscious of time, let's move on to kind of best practice around business accounts. A couple of people have queried whether um, it's, good, it's a good idea to separate your various business streams or have one master Instagram account for all. So let's say someone has um, a personal account that has an established following where they've been posting examples of their work and they're now looking at a business page. Does it make sense to merge that or should, is there more value in setting up a new account? I would say merge personally. I think it would, it would be such a shame to lose. I mean, I'm sure you can help people migrate across to any kind of business page that you would set up. But I think it's probably better if you're happy to kind of sacrifice that personal page to turn it into a business one and archive any content that you'd rather people not see. Yeah, I agree. And also, if you do feel that your business has maybe a few different strands, maybe you've got um, ceramics over here, but you also do interior design or you're a jewellery maker that also um, creates video content, whatever those different streams are, they can kind of live in harmony and it actually gives you more to talk about. And it really sort of it humanizes you as a brand. You're not just um, a, an online catalogue of images. You're you're sharing all of these different um inspirations and so all of that content can live in harmony if it's all jumbled up as long as you have a quite consistent visual treatment like Fran discussed earlier on in her slides in terms of photography style and, and font. Um, okay. And go back to those content pillars if you're doing that if you have multiple streams and just make sure that everything kind of slots into those content pillars. Exactly. Um, I think we've got time for one more question. Great, okay. Um, I'm going to prioritize video. I'm sorry we haven't got to everything else. Um, so how do we convert video reels into actual sales and real consumer intent? So lots of views. It's lovely seeing huge numbers when someone's watched your stories or your Instagram reels or IGTV, but maybe they're not taking that next step. Any tips? 
I mean, I think it goes back to that call to action and making it really snappy. So if you just make sure that in if you have this really highly engaged video, make what you want people to do off the back of it really obvious. So you can have it in that top line, make it really snappy, incentivize it with something like we talked about, like a competition, a free product. Um, and it is it Instagram is difficult because people are um adverse to leaving the platform it's it's a difficult one to get people off we see this all the time ourselves as well but yeah I think you just want to make that call to action really snappy really obvious and incentivize yeah and I would just add quickly um you know TikTok and Reels are established as entertainment hubs it's not it's, it's kind of shoehorning in messaging where people expect to just escape reality and see some really lovely quite sensory visual uh, visual content so I think it's about soft sell and making sure you've got some kind of content that's maybe behind the scenes or user generated. So you're, you're allowing your customers and your community to create TikToks and, and reels about your product. And then you're resharing that and you're allowing that video to really um, educate and entertain your audience and kind of give your, your brand some personality. It's not necessarily gonna be that driver for sales. The other thing I just quickly add to that is that if you're if you do want to drive sales from video, then maybe don't look at reels, maybe pursue something like IGTV or stories where you can actually tag the product and that will take people directly to your shop. Yeah, it's a great place for testimonials. If you can somehow mobilize your followers to create content, um, explaining why they love the, the piece they've bought, or if they ever did a studio tour or you held a, an online workshop, that's a really nice place to capture all of the peripheral stuff that's happening around your business I think we're out of time but we will make sure to scoop up all of your questions about shopping because I know lots of people had questions around um, the shopper journey through Instagram to web and um, how that interacts with Facebook business manager as well brilliant uh, Franny if I can ask you to stop sharing your screen of course. Uh, thank you so much um, to Franny for preparing so much amazing content for our audience today. Uh, for Ananita joining us from your studio. I know you're super busy. Really, thank you so much for sharing your insight. And to Emily for sharing those questions. There were so much. So um, it was great to sort of select the, those key points. I think there's some key takeaways. I've just written down three things time allowing time for this for planning um consistently um and actually factoring in then that whole planning uh, to to make this happen and take great photos i think essentially um that's advice that i remember from john o smart um years ago i said what's your success story he said take great photos okay okay that's the that's the key Thank you once again um, to everyone. I'm going to ask my colleague Tambi to uh, release the poll. And um, this has been our third talk in the series, Spring Back Talk series. And our next one is on Wednesday, the 16th of June at one o'clock. Uh, video is your friend. Um, I'm really, really chuffed that um, we have got Carl o, um, L. Orkran coming to speak with us um, about how to bring video uh, to life, really, how to make it happen for your business and gain that loyal audience following. And I think on the back of everything that has been shared with us today, that's going to be a really useful session to engage with. Um, apologies again to everyone with the technical issues at the start of this. We will be sharing the talk next week through our YouTube channel um, and to everybody that has booked. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to view it, uh, you will do uh, next week, um, which will come along with some brilliant key takeaways. Uh, so thank you in advance, Franny and Emily for that. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you.